What does it mean to be free of the idea you have about God? What is the image, when you think of God, what is the image that rises in your mind? An old man in the sky with a big gray beard, or a loving, caring father, or a harsh dictator? There are many images that might rise in your mind. Until we can learn to let go of these images, these pictures that we have in our mind of what God is, we will continue to hang on to the pictures we have in our mind of what we are. And it is these images, these pictures that we're carrying around in our minds that are actually creating the feelings of a void or the feelings of separation between ourselves and God. I want to talk to you today about those feelings and how we can begin to let go of these images. There's an old Zen story of a Zen master who would go out in the evenings and walk his dog. One evening, uh, the sun had just set, the moon was gently rising into the beautiful summer sky, and he went to take his dog for a walk. And during his walking his dog, he would take sticks and throw them to the dog, and the dog would chase after the stick and bring the stick back. One evening, just as he was going out for the walk, a one of his students came and said, uh, you know, can I walk with you? And the master says, yes, come walk with me, come. And so they're walking. And as they're walking, the student begins to tell him, Master, I really feel like I've got this. I think I'm going to go on my way now. I really feel like I have apprehended. I've gotten these teachings. I know what this is all about. I... I'm ready. I'm ready to move on. I think I'm going to go. During the course of this conversation, the master was throwing the stick to the dog, then just taking it in, listening deeply to the heart of the matter. The student looks at the master and says, so what do you think? Do you, th do you think I'm ready? Do you think I'm ready to venture on my own way to leave uh, and no longer be your student, your disciple? And the master says, you are just like my dog. Student, kind of perplexed, said, what do you mean I'm, I'm like your dog? And he said, watch my dog. He says, go fetch me the moon. And he points his finger at the moon. And the dog just stands, looking at the hand, looking at the finger. And he said, you're just like my dog. You've apprehended knowledge, you've taken in a lot of information, and in doing so, you think you have discovered or awakened and discovered who you are. But in actuality, you're just looking at my finger. You're just looking at the pointing finger instead of what the finger is pointing to. And this is what we do with all our images of God. We are trying to take in enough information, accumulate enough information to wrap our minds around God, create an image of God. Growing up within Christianity and kind of the charismatic uh, tradition and pastoring, I had created an image of a very loving God, which if you're going to create an image, you know, that's the one I would lean towards. But uh, I created an image of a very loving God and thought this is definitely what God is. I mean, after all, the Bible says that God is love, and I followed that. And I begin, But I began to realize that instead of looking at what the finger was pointing to when the Bible says that God is love, I was actually just looking at the finger. In other words, I had tried to conceptualize love as if I could understand, wrap my little pea-sized intellect around what love is, around what God is. 
And the more that I realize that love is a very abstract idea, you cannot really comprehend it. The moment you think you've grasped what love is, it seems to evade you again. It's like trying to grab oil in, the, in your hand or catch the wind. You can't really wrap yourself around love. Love is, in, we use the word all the time and we think we know what it means and we have this picture of this romance and this is what love is. Or we have this picture of a fatherly or a motherly love towards their children and we think this is what love is. But in actuality, love it transcends all of our concepts and all of our ideas. In the same way, God transcends all of your concepts and ideas. And the moment that you put him in the little box of he is love and this is what love looks like, you have now missed God entirely. Now I want you to draw your attention back to what you are. The only one that wants to figure out what God looks like and who is God, in other words, the one that wants to paint the picture in their own mind of what God is, is the one that thinks or believes they are something. When you are identified as a self, as this believed self or ego, then you're always trying to find that higher power and create an imagery around what that power is. This is the reason why Israelites in biblical days created images of God. And this is the reason why Christians uh, create the image of Jesus being God. We're always looking for an image of God. When in actuality what we should be doing is listening and uh, following the pointing. The pointings are revealing what you are and what God is as one. The pointings are revealing that there is no conceptual God. You cannot conceive of God any more than you could conceive or conceptualize yourself. And so, what is God? What is you? What is essence? What is spirit? These are all wonderful questions that I'm afraid if I were to answer, you would just try to take that information and, ah, oh, this is what it is. And you would kind of like uh, sucking a, th a thumb, you know, you just mount one. Instead of following the pointing, you just suck on it for comfort. You just look at it and like a baby taking a bottle or sucking its thumb is looking for comfort. This is the reason why so many people ask in times questions and are waiting for some coming. Because we've missed God in the here and the now. We've missed God within. We've missed our nature, our divine nature, that is the space in which these beautiful avatars are unfolding because we've tried to conceptualize God. You look in a mirror now, if you never had an image of yourself, if you never had any mirrors, never saw your reflection, no cameras, what would your face look like? Exactly, you wouldn't know. And so you wouldn't know whether you were handsome or whether you were ugly or whether you were beautiful or whether you... You wouldn't have any understanding of what that was or what you looked like. What if I were to tell you right now that the image you see when you look in a mirror or the one that's captured on film, neither of those images are actually what you look like at all, but that you are actually the shapeless you, what you really are, are beyond the form altogether. But that that form that you are conscious of is simply an unfolding manifestation of word, an energetic form coming forth from what you really are. Now you can't wrap your mind around that. I can't wrap my mind around that. But what you can do is you can, can begin to let go of the imagery you have of yourself. And you can begin to let go of the imagery you have of God. And in doing this, you begin to transcend all the narratives that have been created and break free of the bondage 
that exists in your mind that is keeping you in insecurity and in fear and doubt. And one of the practical ways that you can begin doing this is to simply recognize that whether you're listening to my teachings or someone else's teachings, don't look at the finger. Look at what the finger is pointing you to. And if you're following someone's teachings and they're always telling you this is how it is and this is what it looks like and this is what you must believe, I tell my students continually, don't believe what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you something to believe. I'm teaching you how to let go of your beliefs. What you do, you don't have to believe me. I'm teaching you to let go of your beliefs. Don't look at my finger. Look at what my finger is pointing towards. My finger is pointing you to something that you cannot grasp. And this is the difficulty. This is where the difficulty lies. As long as you are identified as the mind, as long as you are directly linked to, attached to, and identified as the mind, you will always look at the finger because you want substance. The mind wants substance. But what you are, it goes, ah. It feels so free to be like the wind. Jesus said, this is, every spiritual man is like unto the wind. There's such freedom in, in like being like the wind. It's felt, it's experienced, but you cannot see the wind. In other words, you can't conceptualize wind. And so today I hope that you're learning to let go. You can enjoy all the concepts and paint all the pictures you want, but don't hold them dearly. Don't hold on to them. The more you hold on to them, the less you realize what really is. And the more bondage you'll find yourself in. I hope this helps. I love you guys. Go ahead and drop whatever comments you like. Let me know what you think. And uh, any questions you have, drop them in the comments below. I'll be happy to respond either in future videos or, or actually in, through dialogue below. I love you so much. You are beautiful. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead and do me a favor. Subscribe to our video, like and comment whatever questions you have so that I can respond to those questions in future videos. Hope you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. Remember, you are loved and valued.